All right, so taxation of investment income, we're talking about dividend income. Dividend is when you get, um, you know, you own a stock and you get paid out a quarterly dividend. It's basically a distribution of company profits. Um, so there's two different buckets of how this, uh, how a dividend can be taxed. It can either be taxed as ordinary income, which is at your marginal tax brackets of, you know, 10%, 12%, 22, 24, 32, 35, or 37, depending on where your income falls. Um, or it can be taxed as a long-term capital gain, which is 0%, 15%, or 20%, again, just depending on your level of income and the rest of your situation. So how we determine which bucket it falls into depends on whether the dividend is an ordinary dividend or a qualified dividend. An ordinary dividend is paid, basically, this is the less favorable version that's going to end up in those ordinary income tax brackets. And it's basically a dividend that you receive um, if you've held the security for less than 60 days from the ex-dividend date. Uh, the ex-dividend date is the day before the record date. The record date is the date that the company, when they announce the quarterly dividend, they say, hey, to get paid this dividend, you had to have been a shareholder as of this date. So if you're you know, less than 60 days back from that date, uh, essentially, you're going to be treated as an ordinary dividend, which is taxed at those higher ordinary income tax rates. If you've been holding the security for a longer period of time, you know, um, 60 days or more before that ex-dividend date, then you'll get taxed as a, it'll be a qualified dividend is how it'll be reported to you. And that's a more favorable tax outcome. It's taxed at those long-term capital gains rates. So again, zero, 15 or 20 percent. Um, and so they're essentially rewarding longer term shareholders of companies. If you own a mutual fund, um, which a lot of people do, you know, just in a brokerage account or something like that, then basically uh, you don't really have a ton of control over this. It's based on how your mutual fund trades. So there are some mutual funds that are a little bit more tax efficient. They kind of are a buy and hold type of strategy for a lot of longer term securities. Those will generally have qualified dividends reported to you. Um, if you're a mutual, you know, in a mutual fund that's trading a little bit more frequently and kind of jumping in and out of positions and securities, it's more likely that they're not going to be holding those securities for that 60 day period prior to the ex dividend date. And so those ones will spin off a lot of ordinary dividends rather than qualified ones, which is again, a less favorable tax outcome. So as you're picking your investments, um, you know, tax efficiency is a, is a real thing and it can make a big uh, difference on your total return after taxes. So um, super important thing to consider.